everybody. I'm Michael Olson. I'm Anna Olson. And we want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day. Yes, to all the moms part of the season's communities, and that includes the moms who are part of the wonderful staff. We want to take a quick second and say thank you so much to the hardworking and dedicated staff for looking after the community. We really wanted to be with you and cook a recipe at a season's residence in person, but of course now is the time where we have to be apart but yet come together. So this is so exciting. Instead of doing a Mother's Day recipe of our own creation, we thought it would be so special to share a recipe of one of our residents, one we've actually met in person, Liz Molzen from Drayton Valley. Well, she has given us this special recipe. Hi, Liz. <laughs> for butterscotch oatmeal cookies. And you know what? I think it's a perfect recipe to make for Mother's Day because if you've got kids around the house, you can get in there together, make a little treat for mom. Um, you know what? Until we can be together in person, I think sharing through this means and through baking is a wonderful way to say thank you to mom. And it already smells so good with the butter and the butterscotch and the vanilla. I can hardly wait. <laughs> but you know what? Because we are a crew of two people here, Michael's going to be our director of photography. So, shoot, shoot. will operate the camera. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to take the lead on the recipe. Even as I start making this recipe, just to let you know, you will hear from Michael now and again from behind the scenes because we're all in this together. He's taking care of zooming in on everything I'm doing right now. So I am following Liz's recipe precisely. I hope you approve Liz. And I'm starting off by creaming my butter first to soften it. It's half a cup of butter. Liz says you can use margarine too. Basically, it's whatever you have on hand. And especially these days, we're trying to adapt. And I don't want you to not make this recipe. So I've softened my butter a little bit. And I'm going to add half a cup of granulated sugar. Half a cup of light brown sugar. Now, Liz, you said... Just brown sugar, so I'm assuming light brown or dark brown, either is okay. I'm going to take a second to combine this together. You know, chocolate chip cookies kind of start the same way too. The combination of white sugar and brown sugar, and it lends that nice caramel flavor that you get from the brown sugar. So I can understand where the butterscotch element comes in. Um, just wait till we get to the end and I add all the chips. Now that I've got this all combined, I can add some of my liquids. So I add a tablespoon of milk, which I have to say I thought was interesting. I've never added milk to a cookie recipe, so I look forward to seeing what it does to the texture of the cookie. Does it make, make it nice and soft in the center? I know it will help the sugar to dissolve and make it pretty much a bit easier to stir. Oh yeah, it already it feels easier to stir. It's a good tip, Liz, thank you and a single egg and at the same time I'll add a splash of vanilla. I think your recipe calls for a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half. Just work that in. I think this is a great recipe to make for Mother's Day because all you need is the mixing bowl and the spatula. You don't need to pull out fancy equipment. If you've got a baking tray and a couple of spoons, you can make these cookies. I'd love to know, Liz, when you made these cookies. Were these a holiday time treat or more of a Tuesday after school kind of treat? What do you think, Michael? When would you want these cookies? This looks like coming home from school after playing road hockey all day. I would really dig into a <laughs> delicious chocolate or a delicious cookie like that. Awesome. All right, and now it's already time for the dry ingredients. I love how these measurements are just so simple that I bet if you made this recipe once or twice, you would actually have the me uh, measurements completely memorized. A cup of all-purpose flour. I think you could use whole wheat flour if you really wanted to. And then additionally, I've got half a teaspoon each of baking soda and baking powder. And I noticed, Liz, you put in a full teaspoon of salt. I love that. 
I love when a chocolate chip cookie or an oatmeal cookie has that little salty kick. Balances the sweetness, so thank you for that measurement. Put that right in. And I noticed you didn't say, Liz, to sift the ingredients. You just said to add them. And you know what? I agree with you. For a simple recipe like this, you don't need to sift. If we were making a cake, that's different, but this is easy enough. And you make your oatmeal cookies similar to the way I do. I add my oats at the very end after I've stirred in the flour. So now that this is combined, and now I can add my one cup of rolled oats. I use regular rolled oats. I hope that's okay. I don't have instant, but I find it makes for a chewier cookie because the oats don't absorb as much liquid and turn all cakey. So that was pretty much easy to combine. And then the last addition, the good stuff. So Liz calls for a cup of butterscotch chips. Well, I didn't have butterscotch chips, and this is not a time where we can just pop out to the grocery store to get one ingredient. But what I did have that I thought would suit is half a cup of sea salt caramel chips and half a cup of score toffee bits. So I figure the flavor you're going for is that butterscotch flavor. So Liz, I hope this suits, but I love the idea we're going to get the little crunchy bits and the sea salt caramel bits in there. I would imagine using chocolate chips would be just as fine. Anything in that one cup measure. Or raisins? How do you feel about raisins in your oatmeal? Cookies? Love mm -hmm. raisins. Raisins is the, is the big dividing line. So it people, is. I love them. Oh my gosh, we could talk about butter tarts, raisins, no raisins. Right. Now it's time to scoop. I'm using an ice cream scoop. Two tablespoons would work just as easily. But we want no arguments over the cookie size, so I'm using the scoop. Leave lots of room on the tray. I'm not sure how far these will spread. Let me do a little test here. How many cookies will you get out of one batch? That's a very good question. I'd have to check with the recipe. I suppose it depends on how big you make them. I did follow Liz's instructions and preheated the oven to 350. And these will take about 10 minutes. So the test I'm going to do is I'm going to press down a couple just to see if they spread differently. Sometimes, I don't know, you just never know what you're going to get. So pop these in the oven for 10 minutes and then maybe Michael, you can get these when they're ready. Oh yeah. I'll get the milk. Ooh, those are so These look amazing. Oh, and I have to say, they smell incredible. I can smell the brown sugar, the sea salt caramel chips, and the toffee bits in there. Now, normally, I have a little tip. When I pull a tray of cookies right from the oven, I give the tray a smack to collapse them. But this recipe is so good, they did them all on their own. So obviously, with all those caramel bits in there, these have to cool a few minutes. So I've got the milk ready. How about you, Michael? Are you ready to come? Oh, I'm ready. Check these out. It's hard work working on those cameras all day, you know? <laughs> wow. Love that. I think they're going to be crunchy on the outside, but I'm hoping squishy in the center. Doesn't it just feel like eternity while things like cookies and fresh mm -hmm. bread have to cool down before you can try them. Especially when they smell this good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Whoop, look, that one's leaping out at you. Oh, don't want to drop that. that. <laughs> look at that beautiful golden brown color. Mmm. Glass of milk for you? Thank you so much. Well, Ooh. this has been fun. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Again, happy Mother's Day to moms everywhere. We are proud and grateful of the entire Seasons community, yes. residents and staff. Thank you for everything you're doing. It's a special day to remember the moms. Yes. And for all of you, stay positive, stay safe. We'll be thinking about you. Mm. Thank you, Liz, for this recipe. Mm. Oh, you got that salty kick. Love it. I love it. It's great.
actually met in person. Liz Molson from Drake <laughs> Valley. Well, she has given us this special recipe Hi, Liz. <laughs> for butterscotch oatmeal cookies. And you know what? I think it's a couple of spoons. Make these cookies. I'd love to. Oh, and I have to say, they smell incredible. I can smell mm -hmm. the brown sugar. It's hard work working on those cameras all day, you know? Wow. <laughs> love that. Cheers. <laughs> Again, happy Mother's Day to moms everywhere. We are proud of the moms. Yes. Happy for all of you, stay positive, stay safe. Love it. Love it. To die for. <laughs> Theme. I think that that recipe is a very old recipe, and I'm sure lots of other mums and grandmas have made it Aww. lots of times. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, is there anything else you'd like to share or say to Anna and Michael? Just a happy Mother's Day from these mothers. <laughs> that is sweet.